It's Springbok Radio's Mini Theatre. Interested, lad. Oh, yes. I'd like to think you'd be bored looking at my old junk. Oh, no, I keep telling you, I really want to see it. <laughs> Why else do you think I've been feeding you draft guineas every lunchtime since you told me? Well, it wouldn't appeal to most folk, I suppose. Till you're an educated fella, and that makes a difference. Down here, mind these steps now. I'll put light on. Oh, this is really something. Why, I expected, oh, I don't know, perhaps a model railway layout or a couple of ships in bottles or a working model of a steam engine, but all oh, these display cases, it's like a science museum. Ah, well, it's built up to quite a collection over the years. I better go at the sort of things you were talking about, but it's these little displays I've always had my heart in since I were first apprenticed. Not just following scaled-down plans, but making a little bit of world in miniature. Capturing a moment of time. More room for imagination, I suppose. Well, where shall we start? Why don't you show them to me in the order that you made them? What's the oldest? They're over here. I did this one when I was first apprenticed back in 1912. An ocean liner. Ah, oh, it must have been a big one, all them little cabins and portals. 3,609 aboard on 15th of April, 1912. It's the Titanic, lad. Yes, of course, and there's the iceberg in the background. Ah, uh, well, I had to cheat with that a bit. <laughs> you can't get much in the way of technical specifications for icebergs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think it come out all right, though. It's marvellous. Superb detail. All them little lifeboats. Lucky there weren't any more. They took ages to get right. And you were, what, 14 when you did this? Nah, of course I'd not the skill in them days. But that now made up with nimbler fingers and sharper eyes. 14? Yeah, have a look at a couple more. These here. Oh, airships. This smaller one's got part of the skin cut away, so you can see, well, bags of gas, I suppose they are. There were 17 altogether, filled with hydrogen. Do you know what they were made of? No. Bullocks' intestines. <laughs> <laughs> Don't seem credible now. If you look close, you can see inside Gondola, where passengers were. Eee, that's splendid. And did they really have potted palms in this thing? Aye, and 600 feet of heavy axminster to carpet. It were grossly overloaded on maiden flight to India. I've shown it passing over countryside near Beauvais. That's northern France. Yeah, the uh, scenery and background look really good. That's what we call the diorama. It failed to get clear of those low hills, bust into flames, 54 on board and 47 killed. The R-101. So this one must be the Hindenburg. Aye, lad. <sighs> Gee, by heck, this talking's parched me throat. Would you care for a cup of tea? Oh, um, but there's so much more to see down here. Oh, we're not going upstairs yet, Rad. I've got all the makings down here handy for me workbench, sink, electric, kettle. I rarely stir from down here these days, except for shops and pub at lunchtime, of course. La tradition française. Discover the secrets of great French brandies. Discover the secrets of Richelieu. The smoothness of noble breathing. The softness of absolute purity. Mellowness from years of rest in casks of cognac oak. Maturity from careful blending by continental masters of the art. Today's taste is Richelieu. The brandy in the age-old French tradition. me wireless here to keep up with what's on in world how long have you been uh, on your own well our last was uh, 
take them five years before I retired. So that's twenty-odd years now. Ah, you can't have looked forward to retiring. Living on your own, I mean. Well, it took some getting used to. I miss the lads in the tool room. We had a few good laughs together, but I've always kept a part of myself to myself. I could always live in my own head, if need be. That's where all this comes from, modelling and such. Creating your own world. Catless bargain. Did you ever go back to the factory? Well, I went back once or twice, but things change. My old pals had all gone. Dead, a lot of them. And works has been changing fast in the last few years. They've got lathes now. You just set them up. And put in a little card with instructions and stand back and hey, presto, job's done. Like automatic washing machines. Of course, it's progress. But it's not for me. I don't know how you like your tea, but it's up and strong down here. Oh, that's fine, thanks. And, uh, uh are these your tools on the bench? Aye. My scribes and files and calipers and punches. See, it's the handling of these basic tools that's at the art of engineering. That's why I wonder what lads are learning these days with all this automation. Do they teach them basics of workshop practice, like how to handle a file like this? There's things can't be read in books, nor fed into computers. In the olden days... They used to call a craft a mystery. And there's a lot in that idea. You know, a tool like this file goes back to woo, thousands of years to when man first worked with metals, copper, then bronze, then iron. It were magic, lad. Because apart from magicians, priests and such like, all to the foot were just peasants. It'd be a miracle to them, what metal workers got up to, changing bits of the world. You think on it, lad. Aye. Aye. Yon Greek god, Ephesus, he were a metal worker on Olympus, they reckoned. You know, I think I'm beginning to understand the theme that runs through your work. Your little captured moments of history, they're all disasters which are man-made. Examples of man's technological skill overreaching itself with calamitous results. Aye. Well, there's now it's a queer as folk. What do you reckon to this? Oh, back to the sea again. A tug. What's the name? The Grebecock and a submarine. <laughs> June 1939, the Thetis. Brand new T-class submarine just out of Birkenhead shipyard for trials. 103 on board. Only four got out through escape apparatus. Had me work cut out finishing that one on time. 1939, you see. Trade were picking up again in engineering with rearmament. How do you mean on time? Well, eh, now compare that with this one. More your time, this, you might recall it. It's a bigger submarine this time, nuclear. And a naval surface ship, the Skylark. Oh, yes, I remember this. The submarine was uh, the Thresher. American Navy sank with all hands. June 1963. First trial dive after a refit. 200-odd miles off Cape Cod, dived and kept on going, 8,000 feet to the bottom. Pressure plates were only built for 1,000 feet, maximum. 129 aboard. That were year I retired, 1963. Anyway, being retired, I could get to work full-time on yon Thresher model to get it finished for June. But I thought you said the accident happened in June. Uh, that, that was when the submarine went down. You, aye, hence the urgency. You mean you made the model before the thing happened? Well, that's what engineers make models for, lad, to see how things will work out in practice. They're not, they're not toys. I think we could squeeze another... Cup out of pot. How's time going, lad? Time? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, it's uh, uh, just coming up to one. I like to catch news on wireless, keep up with what's happening. Time enough to have tea, though. 
I've sort of caught headlines. I think we could stroll down to a pub. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> you were kidding me, weren't you? About making the Thresher model before the accident. You don't seem to have grasped the principle, lad. I made them all before the thing happened. That's why it happened. As far as I can work it out. Started with Titanic, like I told you, when I was an apprentice. I was fascinated. I read everything I could lay me hands on about it while it were building. When I started model, I could see somehow the way it ought to be. All lit up at night. A great iceberg looming over it, scraping alongside. I used to wonder if I ought to feel bad about it. But it's not exactly me doing it, you see. Between me hands and tools and materials I'm using. I've heard young primitive folk play out with little dolls to get at folk. Well, us metal workers ought to be able to manage a bit better magic than a bunch of daft peasants, eh? <laughs> Mind you, there's no malice in the way I do it. It just comes to me. I've tried ringing newspapers and such to give a bit of warning, but I'll give it up. It were flogging a dead horse. Uh, could I have no sugar? What, no sugar? Eh, I couldn't drink it without me two spoonfuls. Of course, in me retirement, I've managed to get ahead of myself a bit. Ahead of yourself? Aye. I've got a few jobs laid out just now, just waiting for finishing touches. <laughs> Enough to see me out, I should think. <laughs> what exactly have you got laid out? Oh, <laughs> well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I'll give you a clue. There's some great heavy stuff going around space, you know. Have a look at this, though. What I finished this morning... I've had it under this sheet. This is unveiling like. There. It's magnificent. Oh, definitely one of your best. Oh, the guards at the gate, the Alsatians patrolling the electrified fences, little men in protective suits with Geiger counters. Hey, it's a rum old business atomic energy. I had to do some swatting up to get it all right. <laughs> but I think it were worth it in the end. I'll draw your attention to the cutaway section of the reactor. You can see right through to core. And when I press this here, the control rods start to draw out and reaction gets going. It's starting to glow. Yeah, hey, I thought that were a nice fancy touch. <laughs> Makes a bit of spectacle. <laughs> of course, if control rods jam too far out, You've got an uncontrolled reaction getting hotter and hotter. Is this building up to a nuclear explosion? Eh, uh, we mushroom cloud and all the trimmings. <laughs> Nay, lad, not like that. Just a bit of fission above what's wanted. <laughs> and that no one notices until it's a bit late. And they flood core with coolant water in this case. But it's got too hot for that. And coolant turns to steam instantly and expands and cracks open concrete shield. And then you got your cloud of strontium escaping into the atmosphere. And then it all depends on the prevailing winds. This one's just completed. Aye. Put wireless on, lad. Let's catch the news. And the weather forecast. Ransom Select Multi Filter Mild. A blend of selected Virginia tobaccos with a flavour balance unique to Ransom Select. The exclusive multi-filter with activated charcoal affords a smoke that is smooth, mild and satisfying. Ransom Select, the world's first multi-filter king-size cigarette.
Listen again at the same time next week to another 15 minutes of dramatic entertainment in Springbok Radio's Mini Theatre. <laughs>